Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel and today we're going to be talking about over-the-counter medications that every prepper should be stockpiling. But before we do that, I want to do a couple of disclaimers. First of all, I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on TV. This is just educational only to kind of give you a primer of the types of medications that most people should have. And also, you need to know your medical history, the medical history of your loved ones, be aware of any conditions that you have and how they may interact with certain medications. And also know that if you have children in your group, some medications should not be given to them and you want to know about that. So before you use medication or give it to somebody else, even if it is something over the counter, you know, pretty, pretty easy peasy stuff, you want to educate yourself on that and then also, you know, consult your doctor. That's, that's always a good idea. Um, I can speak from personal experience. You want to have a doctor. Don't try to do everything on your own because you can make stuff worse. I've done it. Don't you do it. And also, for those situations where you cannot get to a doctor, you want to have some good high quality reference materials. And they aren't sponsoring this video or anything like that. This is just something that I got a while back and it's very highly regarded in the preparedness community, the Survival Medicine Handbook. You want to have this or something like it that you can use as a reference if you're in a situation where you just cannot get to medical help. This will help you know how to use certain medications, although you should know how to use them already. Do that research ahead of time and ask your doctor ahead of time. But this is where I got a lot of my information for this video. The first kind of medication that every prepper should stockpile is acetaminophen. And my wife and I both spent time in education, so we just go straight for the big doses. But there are some things that you need to be aware of when using acetaminophen overseas. It's called paracetamol. And first one is acetaminophen is used just by itself, and it's also used in a lot of things like cold medications. So you do not want to take a dose like this and then shortly thereafter take something like NyQuil or DayQuil because that'll put too much acetaminophen in your system and acetaminophen is one of those drugs if you take too much of it or use it for like too long of a period of time, it can be dangerous for you. So it can result in things like kidney disease, bleeding in the digestive tract can also give you greater risk of things like heart disease, stroke, high blood pressure. So really, acetaminophen is really more well-suited for short-term conditions. And that leads us to our next medication you should be stockpiling, which is ibuprofen. Like acetaminophen, it's going to do a good job with pain relief, it's going to help you with fever reduction, but it's also an NSAID, which is a non-steroidal non anti-inflammatory drug, which means it'll help with inflammation. So if you injure your hand and it's swollen, this is going to be a better choice than acetaminophen. And it's also a decent choice for ongoing conditions, th things like arthritis, menstrual cramps, and then even things like back pain. But if you need something longer acting, then Aleve, also known as naproxen, would probably be a good choice. And then the next pain reliever you should have is aspirin. It's a pain reliever, fever reducer, and like aspirin, it'll also help you with inflammation. It too is an NSAID, so you wanna make sure that you are not taking aspirin and ibuprofen at the same time. You wanna make sure that you space those doses out appropriately. Um, whatever it says on the bottle, you don't want to take those one after the other. Now, of course, if you are suffering with severe pain, then it is possible to stagger things like Tylenol and either ibuprofen or aspirin because they're different classes of medications. But you don't want to stack aspirin and ibuprofen or other drugs in that NSAID class. And Aspirin can also be used as a blood thinner uh, to prevent blood clots and it can also be given if there is a heart attack. Now, thing about aspirin that you need to be careful of, this cannot be given to children. It can result in something like Reyes syndrome and one thing that might confuse people is low dose aspirin is sometimes in the vernacular called baby aspirin. Do not give this to babies. It, it is not safe for them. You want to make sure that you're giving them things like children's ibuprofen, children's Tylenol, because aspirin can be very dangerous for children. 
The next medication you should be stockpiling is Sudafed, and Sudafed is a very powerful decongestant. It helps me a lot during cold season because my ears and my head get stopped up, and this will actually clear it out. Other things I've tried haven't really done a good job, things like NyQuil and stuff like that, because the decongestant that they have in it isn't nearly as powerful and it's available in different dosages. This is the four to six hour version. You take it every four to six hours. Last time I was sick, I think I took the 24 hour version, but it's the same active ingredient. Now, when you're buying Sudafed, you wanna make sure that you know exactly what you're getting. You wanna make sure that you get real Sudafed, like what I'm holding here, because there's another version called Sudafed PE, which has a different active ingredient. This has pseudoephedrine. Sudafed PE has phenylephrine, which isn't nearly as effective as pseudoephedrine. Um, now, the reason why there's two versions is people have done bad, bad things with real Sudafed because of what its active ingredient can be used in. Now, a lot of y'all probably know what I'm talking about, but I don't want to accidentally give people instructions for how to do bad, bad things in a trailer in the middle of the desert on accident, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. But because of that, Sudafed is slightly regulated. It's not prescription yet, but it, the only way to get it is from behind the pharmacy counter. You'll have to show them your driver's license, and I think there are records of how much people buy and things like that. So this is one that you wanna be careful when stocking up on. Don't go crazy because then they'll think that you are doing those bad, bad, breaking bad things, which you do not want. So buy this in moderation. Don't try to buy a whole bunch of it at once. The next medication prepper should be stockpiling is loperamide, also known as Imodium. And of course, Imodium is a very good anti-diarrheal medication. Now, you don't want to take it when you have things like a high fever or black bloody stool. You want to avoid it in those cases but diarrhea can be very dangerous if you're in a situation where especially water is in short supply because how diarrhea does bad things to your body is it dehydrates you. So this will help you treat that. Bismuth subsalicylate, also known as Pepto-Bismol, is another good medication for treating things like diarrhea, but it can also be used to treat nausea and as an antacid as well. So it's a good multi-purpose medication and it can be found in pill form like this, can be found in the big honking pink bottle in liquid form, has chewable tablets. I usually get the chewable tablets. I'm not sure why I didn't get those this time. But anyway, one cool thing about this medication is that it can prevent some pathogens from growing in your stomach or your intestines. So in addition to treating symptoms, it can do at least a small amount of good preventing those bad bugs from growing in your gut. Meclizine is another good medication to have around. It's mainly meant to treat things like motion sickness, but it can also help with nausea and vomiting. Now, one thing to know about it is, is that it can cause drowsiness, which could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing depending on how sick you are in the situation that you're in. And then it's also a good idea to have some laxatives on hand, things like mineral oil, because sometimes things are stopped up and you're trying to get them running again, Things like this can help with that. Another medication that every prepper should be stockpiling is Benadryl, also known as diphenhydramine hydrochloride. And this is something that I use a lot. I have seasonal allergies and it's really nice right before I go to bed because that's when it seems to hit me is when I go to bed and when I wake up. So since it makes you drowsy, this kind of helps with my allergies and it also acts as a sedative so that the sneezing and stuff does not keep me up. Uh, can also be used for things like bug bites, mild food allergies. Now, if you have, or if you or a loved one have food allergies that are so severe that they could cause anaphylactic shock, this isn't the way to go, of course, an EpiPen is. But if you just, you know, have mild reactions, things like maybe some hives or something like that, that don't really go any further than that, then this can help you treat those conditions. And According to the CDC website, this isn't my information, this is theirs, 
you can use this in a pinch if you need some sort of like motion sickness medication. I believe the active ingredient in it is very similar to the active ingredient in Dramamine, which is a motion sickness medication. And then it's also a good idea to have some other medications like loratadine and cetirizine like Benadryl. They are going to be antihistamines like cetirizine is Zyrtec, loratadine is Claritin. But these are going to be good since they are non-drowsy versions of antihistamines. So these are good if you have like chronic allergies like what I do. You can take these daily. Um, now you don't want to take both of them daily. But it's a good idea to have both. And the reason why is, is that if you take, say, cetirizine every day, then you can develop a tolerance to it and it doesn't work anymore so that you can switch over to Claritin for a while and once you start to get a tolerance for this you can just bounce back over here that's what i've had to do i've used cetirizine for a couple years it loses its effectiveness so then i switch back over to claritin this loses its effectiveness i just go back and forth between the two and that leads us to our next medication which you should be stockpiling which is famotidine and famotidine its primary purpose is to treat acid reflux and heartburn um, it's safer than some other types of antacids out there, but if you're in a survival situation and you're having to dip into your food storage or eat stuff that you're not accustomed to eating, then you can start to have some unexpected digestive issues arise, and some of those are acid reflux, heartburn, so you want to have things like this, and then also, I mean, even stuff like Tums, they're good to have on hand also. Another thing that's useful to have on hand, and I don't hear people talk about this one a lot, are different electrolyte solutions, things like Pedialyte. And those, their primary purpose is to help prevent dehydration. And that can happen for a couple reasons. One is you're out working outside, you don't drink enough water, and you need to get, you know, fluids and then also, also electrolytes back into your system. So something like this is going to be good for that. But also, if you're in a situation where you have an illness, where you have diarrhea, you're vomiting a lot, then that is going to dehydrate you very, very quickly. And having something like this, it's easy on the stomach and it'll help you get those fluids back in you, hopefully without having to have an IV. Another over-the-counter medication prepper should be stockpiling is triple antibiotic ointment, also known as things like Neosporin. And this is really good at treating small cuts, scratches, abrasions, preventing them from getting infected, and it also helps promote healing. If we're in a long-term grid down situation or even a short-term emergency, something like a hurricane, tornado, something that wipes out your access to services, wipes out utilities, there's a very good chance that hygiene is going to go downhill very quickly. And that's going to mean that even things like small scratches can cause big problems and could even be fatal. One of my favorite like prepper shows or documentaries was on History Channel several years ago, and it's called After Armageddon. And in it, this family, they survived all of this crazy stuff. They survived um, the initial stages of a collapse in Los Angeles. They made it past all these, you know, like road gangs, things like that. They survived the burning desert. They got out of a, like a, kind of a, a really crazy kind of draconian little community, and they finally got to safety. Well, one day, the dad was out there taking apples off of an apple tree. He had a knife, cut his hand, later got affected, and that's what killed him. So having something like this could prevent horrible things like, hap like that from happening. But if you have something like a deep puncture wound, this isn't really meant to treat stuff like that. You're either going to need oral or IV antibiotics, so that's when having something like a Jace case or something similar would be useful because you would have access to stronger antibiotics that could be used to treat more severe infections. Another kind of medicated cream that you should get is antifungal cream, something like Lotrim and Ultra. And I do favor the more powerful kinds over the, I guess, more base products. I'd rather spend a little bit more and get something I know is going to knock a condition out. But it treats things like athlete's foot, ringworm, yeast infections, stuff like that. And those kind of conditions in a like grid down situation, especially one that's more long term, they are going to become more common because of poor hygiene, also lack of access to running water. So having something like this 
will help you treat those infections, or sorry, those fungal infections, before they get too severe. And y'all know lists like this from me would be complete without mentioning VapoRub. Helps me out when I'm dealing with my allergies, with colds, coughs, things like that. Just put some on your chest, it makes your life so much better. My wife hates the smell, but I needs it. And if you have kids, especially little ones, you wanna make sure that you have medications that are safe for them to take. Like, uh, this is children's cetirizine. My child has a mild egg allergy and this helps him with that. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not anaphylaxis or anything like that. It just kind of breaks out a little bit and that helps get rid of it. We try to avoid it, but you know, sometimes things happen. Pizza Hut, pizza sauce has egg in it. I was thinking it would be the crust, but no, no, no. Well, the crust probably does, but if it's baked, he's fine with it. But their pizza sauce has egg in it. So if you have a little one with an egg allergy, don't get Pizza Hut because their sauce has egg. Very weird. And then also things like children's ibuprofen, children's Tylenol, stuff like that. But with any of these medications, be sure that you know the minimum age at which a child can take these. And y'all, if there's any other medications that you or a loved one uses when you are sick, be sure to have those. Don't just go off of this list, but think back to the last time that you or a loved one got sick. What did you have to go to the store to go get to help them feel better. Those are the things that you should be stockpiling. And next time that, that you or your loved one gets sick, take note of what you have to go out and get and be sure that you have plenty of that ready for the next time one of y'all gets sick. So uh, if you wanna learn more about the Jace case, I'll be sure to put a card up here. And if you wanna see more about the Survival Medicine Handbook, and other prepper and survival related books that I personally recommend, you can click on the card over here. So y'all have a good one. Thanks again.